perhaps sometimes you've stood in front of a mirror and said to yourself after a few years, how did I get here? Where but here could Pittsburgh Sports Nation meet to open our hearts and minds for all to see? Thanks for joining us on this most special occasion. I'm delighted that you're with me tonight. Hi, my name is Stan Saverin. I've been a sportscaster here in the Pittsburgh market for the past 16 years. And for all those 16 years, among other duties, I have been the host of a very popular radio sports call-in show. What we propose to do here at KBL merely is to add a camera. We will confine ourselves to the precepts of a standard call-in talk show, discussing opinions frankly, openly, and honestly with the callers and Pittsburgh area sports fans. It has proved the most successful format for me over the years. We'll have occasional guests, newsmakers, and an occasional theme show such as Trivia Nights, but by and large, it'll be the frank, open, and honest discussion and exchange of sports opinion between me and the Pittsburgh area callers. It's worked in the past. I expect it'll continue to work in the future. The beat goes on, only it's the Penguins who are getting beaten up. The Pens lose again last night to the Washington Capitals, the final 5-3. to three. Guy, they're winless on the road in their last seven. They're 1-6-3 and three in their last ten, and just three points ahead of the fifth-place Islanders. Yeah, with the talent on the team, you still have to think that they're going to be able to turn it around at some point. Nineteen games to go, though, and looking grim. And Edward DeBartolo Sr., whatever you think of him, uh, certainly made a financial commitment to bring a win here and an aesthetic commitment by bringing in may feel the best general manager in hockey today, and of course Bob Johnson, Scotty Bowman as well, to complete the organization at a time when he could have said, uh, we don't really need Scotty Bowman here. This is going back, of course, a year and a half ago. Well, hopefully when they give out that award, it won't be the last home game of the year, the way things are going right now. Yeah, the last home game of the year, one would hope, would be in the Stanley Cup Finals at, uh, at some point. The Penguins are going to win the Stanley Cup, I believe. Stanley O shoots it block. The Penguins have won the Stanley Cup. Oh, Lord Stanley, Lord Stanley, get me the brandy. All that glitters is not gold, and all that Gary glitters sparkles in Pittsburgh is silver. The cup stays here. It belongs here. Guy, the Penguins, clearly the better hockey team. I didn't think they sweep, they'd sweep. I know you didn't. One of our callers did last week. That may have been optimistic, but realistic nonetheless. You know what, Stan? I think uh, any chance Chicago had in the series ended in the first game. I'm not sure they knew it at that time, but uh, when they blew two, three goal leads in game one here at the Civic Arena, they never really were able to recover from that. I'd be most anxious to hear not only your thoughts on the Stanley Cup victory, but how it compares emotionally for you to last year's. Guy and I were discussing that earlier, and perhaps we can address that topic tonight. Naturally, everybody's thrilled, but how does it compare? Uh, to last year's Stanley Cup championship. Welcome back to KBL Sports Beat. This, of course, is the head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers, Bill Cowher. He had trouble getting in the front gate. They wouldn't let him in. That's all right, Bill. They won't let me in the front gate of Channel 4 anymore either, so it's okay. We're equal. Welcome to the program. Thanks, Jim. Pleasure to be here. Obviously, your first priority when you got here was to put together a staff. You have now done that. What came next, or what comes next, present tense? Evaluating the talent you have, currently on the roster? Well, you know, after having put together the staff, I thought the first thing we had to do then was to sit down with each player. And, and uh, I've had an opportunity to sit down with probably about 38 or 39 of the players in a one-on-one -on -one situation uh, to talk with them and you get a feel for them and really more what's expected from them and kind of direction that we're heading. You realize you've been on the show now for four minutes. That's four minutes longer on a talk show than Chuck Knoll spent in 23 years. You've already broken his record as far as talk show appearances are concerned. Chuck Knoll joins us now on Sportsbeat. Chuck, welcome. Thank you, Stan. There was a great passage that Mark Twain wrote in Tom Sawyer where Tom would attend his own funeral and uh, all the people say nice <laughs> things. And I'm wondering, as you watch Guy Junker's report, what went through your mind seeing some of that old video and the nice things people said? Well, that's, uh, that's pretty much the way it's been, uh, Stan. Uh, in fact, my wife said to me, uh, you're the only guy that's ever had a chance to hear his own eulogy. Is it embarrassing? Uh, well, in the sense, uh, you know, it's uh, not really. 
beginning to enjoy it, I guess, a little bit. Well, I guess knowing Marianne, I'm sure she keeps a level head. I'm sure she doesn't want <laughs> to get too far out of control. Chuck, why here? Why now? If we were to have asked you a year ago to, to be on this show or 15 years ago, uh, the answer was pretty much standard. Why did being coach of the Steelers preclude you from public appearances uh, and shows such as this? Well, you know, it, uh, you know it, it's hard to explain uh, exactly, Stan. I, I think uh, one of the reasons uh, was time. And, uh, uh, you know, I've always been brought up uh, with the idea that actions spoke louder than words. And, uh, you know, you get into talk and uh, talk is cheap. Uh, you have to do it. Other than the travel and the money, Hank, how has the game changed from 1955 to 1992? I think the one way it has changed, of course, money has changed a lot of it, and not only in the players' demand, but it has changed some of the owners. Uh, there's little trust among players and the owners now, you know, uh, because of the fact that owners don't have to contend with the baseball players. They deal with the agents, and the agents I might add, probably run the game. I'm sad to say it, but they probably do. Are today's players, the modern day player, better than they were back when you played in the 50s and 60s? Well, I don't know that they're better. Uh, I, I can't say that. I think what I see in players today is that uh, I think players are more content. People often ask me, what's the best interview you've ever done? What's the most difficult interview you've ever done? Actually, they were one in the same. Reginald Martinez Jackson. If you watch the first 20 seconds very carefully, you'll see exactly what I mean. From Cooperstown to KBL. Long trip in a very short amount of time. Reggie Jackson, welcome to our program. It's an honor to have you here. Thanks, Dan. Can you possibly capsulize your emotions at the dais on that day? No, not really. Can you summarize them? Uh-uh. That, was it an emotional time for you? Was it so well thought out that uh, no. <laughs> you were prepared? No. Um, it, it's really difficult to, to describe um, in finally recognizing or being where I was, um, standing in front of Stan Musial and Tom Seaver and Frank Robinson and Whitey Ford and Yogi Berra. Uh, knowing that the Babe and Lou and, and Joe D and the Mick and and Hank and Willie, um, that I was being in Stan the Man Musial and then I was being included with them, um, is a feeling that I it's it, it's very it's enormously difficult to describe. J.P. Morgan Wealth Management knows it's easy to get lost in investment research. Get help with J.P. Morgan Personal Advisors. Hey, David, ready to get started? Work with advisors who create a plan with you and help you find the right investments. So great getting to know you. Let's take a look at your new investment plan. Okay, great. This should have you moving in the right direction. Thanks, Jen. Get ongoing advice and manage your investments in the Chase Mobile app. A lot happens in sports every year, every month, every day sometimes. All kinds of great sports events, some not so terrific, like when the Pirates lost to the Braves in 1992. Here are some of the major stories that we have covered for you and we've shared together on Sports Beat. And he is saved! Saved at the plate! The Braves go to the World Series! This was the immaculate reception in reverse. This was Johnny Bench's home run. This was Mike Crombean's goal. This was devastating. This was awful. And it hurts. And it's going to hurt for a long time. Guy, everyone I ran into today, several people, there's a pall over the city, uh, and everybody's reacted the same. It's, it's, it's hard to shake. Yeah, if they just would have lost the game 6 to 1, 10 to nothing, or something like that, it might have been easier. Last time I was this depressed, three girls turned me down to go to the prom on the same day. <laughs> and that's a true story. If Lean makes the play, man on third, one out, you allow Bream, if he hits a sack, fly, fine, it's 2-1, two, two out, nobody on. Even if he gets a base hit, you still got a 2-1 ball game with Bream on first, takes at least a double, probably a triple to score him. But the error, you know, but again, when I talked about if you're going to be a champion, you have to make the championship plays, whether they're spectacular or ordinary, you just have to do those things. And that's not pointing to figure, I think it's a statement of fact. 
But I do believe that I wouldn't, I wouldn't have brought in Belinda that early. Hey, Stan, you'd make one heck of a manager. Yeah, you no thanks. <laughs> no thanks. We got the best in baseball okay. right here. I don't oh, want to challenge that. The sun came up this morning. The sun didn't shine as brightly, but I assume that it'll come up again tomorrow and uh, get out the Band-Aids and start the healing process. Good show tonight. Enjoy talking to you and hearing your thoughts. It was therapeutic for us, I hope, for as well as you. They don't give you extra points for effort, and there won't be an asterisk in the Super Bowl record books, but anyone who saw this game knows full well the outcome could have been different. The Steelers, the better team, certainly at least in the second half. The guy, when you are at a talent disparity, as they were, without pointing to two plays, and only two plays, you just can't afford to make mistakes. You've almost got to be literally perfect when they have got more talent. Everyone's going to blame Neil O'Donnell on those two interceptions as a difference in this game. The lengthiest and most arduous journeys are sometimes the most satisfying, and while Kevin McClatchy may not be on top of the mountain, at least he can now stop climbing. Guy, when Lennon and McCartney wrote the words to the long and winding road, I'm not sure that they had the sale of the Pirates in mind, but it certainly is apropos, and at long last, the quest is over. A lot of work to be done, but the first step has been taken. It is in cement. Kevin McClatchy now owns the Pittsburgh Pirates. Did you actually, at times, during this pregnancy of nine months as you uh, termed the start of the press conference actually envision this day this hour and how you might handle it and were there doubts that it would ever occur were there times when you had doubts you would actually experience this hour from three to four o'clock yeah I, I uh... i believe telling the truth is important there were i did have doubts during certain times of this project welcome to the north shore Sports beat, Stan and Guy sitting right around where first base is going to be in a couple of years from today. Welcome. Tonight we are going to be broadcasting the entire ceremonies, which will include the dedication of the Roberto Clemente Memorial Bridge and, of course, the groundbreaking for PNC Park. A month ago, we gathered on the North Shore to celebrate the Pirates' new PNC Park. This afternoon, the circle was completed as the Rooney family and the Pittsburgh Steelers broke ground for the brand new, still as yet unnamed football stadium right alongside to the west to open the season of 2001. Welcome to just outside Gate C at Three River Stadium, now in its second to last year of existence. That's hard to imagine. I'm sitting here looking at it right now and it's a little sad to think that in two years it'll be gone. It's played the biggest part in my professional life and don't it always seem to go that you don't know what you got till it's gone. Let the goodbyes begin. The sun sets tonight not just on a Sunday, not just on a singular baseball season, but upon an era. Generations of baseball fans have known only Three Rivers as its baseball home. Now, next year, the boys of summer will have a new playground, PNC Park, as we move across the street. Welcome to Fox Sports at Pittsburgh's Kiss and Goodbye post-game celebration. Stan and Guy with you. Guy, there's a certain symmetry here. The Pirates close Forbes Field against the Cubs. They open Three Rivers Stadium against the Reds. They close Three Rivers against the Cubs. They'll open PNC Park against the Reds next April. And they opened uh, Three Rivers Stadium with a one-run loss, and they closed <laughs> Three Rivers Stadium with a one-run loss in a wild and exciting game here today. And it first appeared here on the USA Today webpage. It was confirmed by here, H-E-A-R, here. And here at the Penguins practice facility at South Point. We help you guys out. Hi, I'm Stan Savage. How's it going? How you doing? Good. I'm just trying to get some shots up. Jay, how long has this been going on? Well, uh, we've been out here skating and working off the ice for about a couple weeks right now. So we're going into week three. How's he look? Looks good. I mean, uh, first couple of days, it's a real test right away because he hasn't been on the ice uh, uh, competitively, and we worked hard on all this uh, from just getting his legs back underneath him. Today's the first day we really did stops and starts, so he's doing good. How did you get involved? How did this all begin? I just had a voicemail from him one day. You know, he said, hey, I, uh, Jay, I need a skating partner, somebody to work me out, and that's how we started. So I called him back, and we got a time set, and I didn't really talk about anything. I didn't talk about I kind of know a timetable in a sense, but I said, hey, these are things we're going to work at, and we've been going at it ever since. to a standing ovation from the crowd here at the Mellon Arena. 
Wagner out of the right side of Kovalev. Pulls the trigger. Puck jumps in the air. Slews it. Lemieux turned it back and down. Lemieux scores. Mario Lemieux is tying it for the Penguins. Does it make it special? I mean, the tying goal that it was Mario who did it. Well, of course, no, I wish I, were, I, I did it, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's Mario Lemieux, you know. And I think uh, he always dreamed to score goals like that, but I know, I, you know, I'm still waiting for my uh, dream to come true, you know, but hopefully one day I'll do it too. Maybe Thursday night? I hope so, you know. I think he's got a trigger. Here's Casper Ryder, twisting one. He shoots and scores. The Pittsburgh Penguins have won the series. In overtime, Darius Kasparitis. Let's get the unlikely hero, but not an unsung hero. When I asked you how you felt when Mario scored that tying goal the other night, you said, I wish I would have scored it. I said to you, maybe you'll get your chance Thursday night. Here you are. You know what? I dream about overtime goal, any overtime goal in nine years, and score goal like that in game seven. I got to remember for the rest of my life. You know, it's just going through adversity this season, you know, Trade talks, all the things, and uh, helping Pittsburgh advance to semifinals. That's a big thing for me in my life. Well, the first pitch cut the heart of the plate. It did have a bit of a break on it. I don't think he was meaning to throw a curveball there. It may have been the distance, but he got it over the heart of the plate. Nonetheless, what a night for Bill Mazeroski. I mentioned at the top of tonight's show that he might fill in the missing 10 minutes from Cooperstown on 70. I think Maz talked less tonight than he did even at Cooperstown on Sunday, which was about two and a half minutes. But indeed, that is Bill Mazeroski, the understated Hall of Famer. A great night for him. The Pirates will play the San Diego Padres. For those of you who were born here and for those of us who have chosen to live here and make Pittsburgh our home, Pittsburgh is the epicenter of our universe. But for the 72 hours beginning yesterday through tomorrow night, Pittsburgh is the epicenter of the baseball world. The 77th All-Star Game comes to the Berg for the second time in 12 years, but for the very first time at PNC Park. It has long been said since the ballpark opened in 2001 right along Mazeroski Way that it was the crown jewel of all bar ballparks, old and new, in the Major League Galaxy. Now the rest of the country and world will know what we have known for quite some time, that while the baseball has not been very good at PNC Park, PNC Park is very good for baseball. We love Pittsburgh. We love the city of Pittsburgh, and, and we love the fans, and that's what it boiled down to. Is that to say that you're convinced that this can be turned around and that it will be turned around maybe beginning this year? Oh, definitely. You know, um, you know, it's one of those deals where, you know, this team was put together last year to win, to go out and win, and, and we have the same group of guys with a year under our belt. Um, I think the big thing is we're just going to need to play better as a team. There's one more chapter to write. That will come in a couple of hours here in Joe Louis Arena. And Lord Stanley, scratch their names on your fabled cup. Really an amazing team with an amazing story. Well, my first thought, Rob, is uh, will uh, Marion Hossa now sign with the Penguins next year with his best opportunity to win a Stanley Cup? Uh, I did feel there was something special about this hockey club, the way that they maintained focus when Dan Bilesma came in. He got it into their heads. If you continue to play the way we can play and the way we want to play, things will turn out for you. How does it feel? Well, obviously it feels great. <laughs> You know, I, I, every morning when I wake up, I, I like to say that's the best day of my life. You know, just to start the day on the right foot. And today, you know, I can really say that it is the best day of my life. <laughs> can share that with my family, my friends, this team, and it's really special. What did it feel like to pick it up, to kiss it, to lift it, and to skate around with well, it? I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go do that again right now. I kiss it again because uh, when you're out there, obviously it's special, but you don't realize it as much. So uh, I'm gonna have uh, all summer to think about it, and uh, you know. Uh, Realize that we really won the cup. Thanks for all you did for us all year long, Max and FSN, and we'll see you at the parade. Thank you, Stan. Habits are tough to break because we enjoy them so much. Who'd want to break this citywide habit anyway? We've been here before. 
not long ago. Only this time, the beautiful clear blue skies contrasted with the jam-packed black and gold byways. The boulevard of the Allies was stacked, literally one on top of the other, with the Pittsburgh Penguins' closest allies. Hundreds of thousands of riled up fans, they dangled out the windows, hung out of trees, and gathered on rooftops. They climbed everything in sight. They came out of youthful excitement, out of elderly reverence. They came through divine providence and through insane passion. They came to see the Stanley Cup champions, and the Penguins came to see them, too. Feels good to be off the sidelines, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, it does. That extra effort with AHN Sports Medicine got you back here. With every specialty set, custom training day, and personalized drill, you bettered your body. Now line it up. They don't see this move coming. Told you. Go next level with AHN Sports Medicine. As Americans, we're defined by our values and our rights. We prioritize safety and responsibility. We cherish our home and our family. National Armory. Visit us in Moon Township, PA and national-armory.com. Get to know Mullineau Homes 4.8 star Google rating. Save big on flooring, carpet, kitchens, and interior painting. Call 412-400-1000 to book a free estimate. Get to know La Roche University set me up for success. When I went to La Roche to visit, it stole my heart. I transferred to La Roche because my original school just didn't work out. La Roche, I was able to be on a basketball team. They had majors I wanted and financial aid and their assistance helped out a lot. It's not too late to attend La Roche University this fall. Financial aid and housing are still available. Tour campus and you'll receive a $250 visit grant. Learn about our sneak peek admission events this summer at laroche.edu. If you don't recognize this face, you're either very young or you don't have a very good memory. This, of course, is four-time Super Bowl winner, soon-to-be All-Pro, former Steeler great Mike Webster. Mike, good to see you again. Dan's great to be here. Great to see you. What are you doing in town? Well, I'm uh, planning on living here again, Sam. Good. That's <laughs> I, a good you know, addition. I always, always anticipated coming back, you know, and uh, this is basically my home. And my special guest co-host and very good friend is WPXI TV sports anchorman Sam Nover. Welcome. Nice to have good you. Good evening, Mr. Saver. Nice to see you again. I just want to thank you so much for uh, teaching us so much about baseball and about winning and about losing and doing it with such dignity and grace. You've left an indelible mark, not only on Pittsburgh baseball, but the entire region. And on behalf of all those who feel as I do, thank you so much for all you've done for all of us. Well, Stan, it's those kind of comments that are going to help me get through this, believe it or not. And let me say this. This is not a farewell. This is just uh, I might not be here in the summertime. But I, too, want to say that I don't think anybody, a manager, uh, coach, professional level, anywhere, and I believe this, I doubt that anybody has ever been welcomed like I was here. Really does not need any kind of introduction whatsoever. Terry Bradshaw, great to have you back on Pittsburgh TV again. <laughs> you got me tickled already. <laughs> it didn't take long. I know. This is the first take. To it. I know it's the first take. It's good to be here. Thanks, Stan. Guy, good to see you guys. Well, do we need a drum roll? Now, we're going to ask you, to, Jim, to flip I'm that ready. ball over to Franco. I'm but ready. I'm whatever you do, don't years. hit Guy in the shoulder because <laughs> the whole controversy will start all over <laughs> again. <laughs> Turf burn on the toe of the ball. You've board. not touched this ball since that <laughs> very moment. No, I haven't. All right, Jim, go ahead. He has roll. not. No matter where I throw it, I think Franco is yes, going to actually yeah. catch it. Yes. All right. <laughs> what? Feel free. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. Jimmy just lost it forever. <laughs> that ball's a little softer, uh, isn't it, Franco? A little softer, but uh, still, still feels, feels good. good. Yes. But he finally made it to the big time. Finally made it to the big show. You look familiar. I remember you. Yeah, it's been a long time, I guess. Huh? Yeah, a real long time, about <laughs> four months. Mario, thanks for being here. My pleasure. You know, my first question to you is, all your career, you wanted to remain as private as possible. Now you are in private life, and yet you write a book that, again, makes you public. There's a contradiction there, it seems to me. Why now? 
Well, I uh, always wanted to wait until my career was over to uh, to show the public uh, what I went through throughout my career, and, and uh, we just decided about six months ago that uh, since I was retiring this year, to, to put out a book to the public to to show uh, uh, how I started my hockey career back in Montreal, and uh, um, that's a book that I'm real proud of. This, of course, is Steeler Hall of Famer Jack Ham. Jack, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for coming out. Oh, it's my pleasure to be here, Stan. Great to have you. You had great, solid tackling technique, and uh, you, you were a heads-up, thinking man's player. I mean, as much as you thought on the field, you ought to have a bigger head. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate the kind words. Was that the key, Jack? Was it a matter of technique for you, or was it a matter of just of instinct? Well, the previous caller talked about Andy Russell, and I, I had the luxury of coming into the game as a rookie and watching Andy. He'd already been with the team, I think, about four or five years. And he was right. Andy was a smart football player, and I was able to learn a lot from him. This is Andy Russell, two-time Super Bowl champion, longtime Steeler. Andy, welcome. It's a real honor to have you on our show. Thank you, Stan. It's, it's great to be here. Do you find that, that the younger fans today are aware of the legacy but may not know who Andy Russell is? Uh, in all seriousness, I mean, they're aware of the legacy and, you know, Lambert and, and the Hall of Famers, but, I mean, do you run into that at all, that you're appealing to moms and dads now? Yeah, that, I was uh, in a bar the other day, and a, a young lady came up to me. She said, you know, you are my grandmother's favorite. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, so, but the way you played the game fit the personality of this town and this region, and if it was possible, made you even more popular than a four-time champion might be. <laughs> well, I... I was fortunate enough to have played on one of the greatest football teams of all time. You know, I'm, I'm sitting back there with some of the boys, and, and they're all in the Hall of Fame. Did you have a desire to get back into coaching at the National Hockey League level? Well, uh, I've been uh, gone for so many years, and uh, the raising a family was first and foremost in, in my mind at the time. And How much time do you spend uh, of the year in Latrobe versus various other places, and do you still carry that Western Pennsylvania thing that seems to exist with all Western Pennsylvanians? You mean you can't tell? <laughs> <laughs> when you look back, what are you most proud of? The tournament victories, um, the major championships, or what you've given to the game and how many millions of people you drew to the game? Well, uh, all of those things. Stop waiting in line at drive throughs just to place an order. Use the Domino's app on Apple CarPlay instead. Domino's? Yes. And say goodbye to the drive through with every tap. Okay, what should we get? Ooh, pineapple, mushrooms, yeah. pepperoni. Order carry out on the go using the Domino's app, now on Apple CarPlay. As you look back and, and perhaps reflect a little bit, uh, are you happy with your life? Do you have any regrets? I never had great ambitions to become a multi multi millionaire. All I ever wanted in my life was to be a decent provider for my wife and my children, if I had children to the world, and to have friends, hopefully, and to live a, a simple life. How long have you been doing this? Uh, this would be 26 years for me. Uh, I had a little uh, break there for about two years where I joined up with uh, Hasbro Toys and G.I. Joe. Uh, but I still wrestled, but now with the World Wrestling Federation. You're one of the top two prospects in the organization, the other being Andrew McCutcheon. You got a chance to play with him. We really only see him in spring training and on selected bases. I think fans out there would be interested to know what kind of player is he? Uh, what, what are your impressions of McCutcheon? Is he, is he major league ready? I, he's very close. I mean, Andrew is an absolutely gifted athlete, and he uh, he swings the bat extremely well. I think the first thing you'll see if you see, if the first time you get to watch him play is how quick his bat is. And uh, you know, at times it's almost like a Gary Sheffield thing where it's almost too fast, and you know, sometimes he has to slow it down to to, to actually make contact solid with the ball. But uh, he, he he doesn't miss anything in center field. He has a great arm, great speed. I mean, he's 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 the epitome of a five-tool player and what they look for. And, uh, you know, time is time is of the essence. He'll be he'll be up here very shortly, and, and people will get a treat every time they go to the ballpark to see him play. There's no doubt about that. Well, I expect we'll be able to say the same thing about you, Neil. Hope you get to wear that for a few more <laughs> weeks, and then we'll see you down in Florida. Thanks for coming in. Happy New Year. Thanks, Dan. All Thanks. right, Neil Walker from Pine Richland High School, and soon to be the Pirates' everyday third baseman in the not too distant future.
the 75th anniversary all-time Steelers team. Are you ready for some football? When you got word you were drafted by the Pittsburgh Steelers, what was your reaction? I would, I would like to say that uh, <laughs> I was happy, but uh, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't have any money. I didn't have enough money to go out and get drunk, so I just stayed home and argued with my wife. What are they doing to me? <laughs> uh, Joe's nickname is Mean Joe Green, and there's a reason for it. And he took off Charles, with a Charles Babb helmet and, and, and just whooped, just wiped, he was holding him. You don't want to hold Joe. And he just started wiping people out. I'm just standing on the sideline and then, my God. And, they, and they're chasing him, they're trying to pull, that's a fact, Jack, you know it is. And he's, he, he, Hitting every, he's hitting Bobby. Remember, he is smacking and hitting people, and the refs are trying to stop him. He took the helmet, slung it on the field, ran. They kicked him out of the game. He ran back, grabbed the football, ran to the end zone, threw it in the stand, and I'm just 22 years. I'm just like, my God. I really didn't study the history of the Steelers, and I didn't know how bad they really were. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I really didn't, and and and. Uh, you know what, uh, it's amazing how things work out where, uh, where you're drafted and so you really have a choice and I'm saying, man, am I lucky I did, not, I did not have to choose? You know what I mean? That I was drafted and I could not have been at a better place at a better time. Dan, first of all, what is it about football in western Pennsylvania? Why are they one and the same and how does that translate to not just being fans but feeling like they're a part of the franchise? It's so evident here that, you know, when I was growing up, and I think it's still the same now, that every kid that could play did play. And it just got, like, if you look at the, besides all the tremendous players we have, there's more coaches from Pittsburgh than there is anywhere else. There's more officials. We maybe complain about that, but there's more officials <laughs> in the National football league from Pittsburgh than, than there is anywhere else. And it's because of the knowledge. I always say that we have the most knowledgeable fans in, in the National Football League. They know the game. They know when to cheer, and they also know when to boo. So, <laughs> If I can be presumptuous enough to speak for an entire region, I probably shouldn't. Congratulations from everybody on this honor. It's wonderful. Uh, Today has touched all of our hearts. I know it's touched yours. But you're a player and a person of a lifetime and several generations. And you've just thrilled all of this. And if anything that can bounce back to you, then it's all been worthwhile. Well, Stan, I can't begin to tell you what uh, this city, from all the people, and there's a, a tremendous cross-section of ethnic traditions and cultures that and I've seen uh, a lot of happiness that I think we provided for the people who came out. People that wouldn't be hugging and having them over for dinner or going out for a drink, doing these things. So Pittsburgh know how to bring people together too and tailgate with the Steelers out there in the cold. I loved every minute of it. Thanks, Will. Thank you, Stan. It's time for the FanDuel Sportsbook Spotlight. The Pirates look to shake off yesterday's loss to the Cubs in Game 2 of their series at Chicago. Wagering on the Bucks to win and under 9.5 runs are scored will earn you $330. The Subway Series continues at City Field as the Yankees battle the Mets. Bring home $350 if Garrett Cole records eight or more strikeouts and the Yankees win. In golf, the U.S. Open tees off tomorrow in Los Angeles. Put $100 on Rory McIlroy and Brooks Kepka to both finish in the top five for a chance at $1,400. Right now, new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $2,500. Download the FanDuel Sportsbook app to start making every moment more. 
Must be 21 or older and present in Pennsylvania or West Virginia. Site credit is non-withdrawable and expires in 14 days. Restrictions apply. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Sidney Crosby joins us on Sportsbeat. Welcome. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to have you on, uh, on the program. Now, this is already better than that cheesy Jay Leno show, don't you think? I mean, this is, this is a bigger deal, don't you think? Yeah, a little different. But if you can, recount what you felt when you saw the vista of downtown Pittsburgh. Yeah, like you said, I heard a lot about it, but uh, until I and actually witnessed it, uh, it was quite a sight to, to see all the stadiums there. And uh, obviously, I know about the Steelers and the Pirates, but I uh, wasn't able to really see their, their buildings. And, uh, I mean, that stadium is uh, unbelievable, that uh, the new baseball stadium there. And... And the football stadium as well, but uh, I think the happiest time was, was seeing the rink today, uh, this afternoon. That's that's what I came here to see. So we got you a Jerome Bettis Steeler jersey. Which camera you want? This one. So this is for you, and you can uh, slip that on uh, after you leave here. Okay. We wanted you to have that Thank and you. uh, your first piece of memorabilia here in in Pittsburgh. Thanks very much. You are Appreciate very it. welcome. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Sydney. Uh, Jenny, in. Russia, were you ever on a TV program like this? Have you ever been on live television before? В России ты был когда-то на на прямой трансляции вот по телевидению, вот как ты сейчас здесь? Нет, для меня это впервые и полностью немножко. No, I've never been on a live TV, and um, I'm kind of uh, very, uh, very, you know, surprised and a uh, little bit nervous. A little, <laughs> calm down, it's fine. You're just, it's just, just us guys talking. That's all it is. You promised me. You were going to say, let's go Pens. Let's go Pens. Did you learn significant things, maybe even things that you thought you were already comfortable with? Absolutely. You know, there's a difference between preparing yourself to do a job and actually doing the job. As I sit here today, I believe that I'm better. Uh, but like you said, potentially, I got to go out and do it, as does our football team. And I'm excited about doing that. We're joined now by all-time tennis great Martina Navratilova. Martina, this is National Tennis Month, and I'm wondering, what is the state of tennis in America? Mainstream media who don't f cover tennis very often often correlate, if there's an American in the top ten, men or women, that it's either a good or bad year for American tennis. Do you look at the health of the sport in this country that way? Well, if, it, if you just look at it from an American perspective, then, yeah, you correlate it to how successful are Americans at, at, at on the world stage. If you look at it from a worldview, tennis has never been in better shape because it's much more international, much more global, much more diversified, and uh, that's a good thing. We're joined by Penguin winger Ryan Malone, who had nothing to do. The Penguins don't have a game for six days, and Ryan was so bored, he figured, maybe I'll come on TV. Welcome, Ryan. Is it really that boring with all these uh, days off? Uh, it's not that boring. It's definitely nice to have. Uh, it kind of reminds, it reminds me of college where, you know, just playing the weekends and the whole week you have to yourself. So it's good, and it's uh, nice to have me down in the new studio. It looks nice down here. Paul Coffey into the Penguins Hall of Fame. I don't know, not that much change uh, in, in 20-some years, Paul, do you think? A little more hair and no, uh, no gray, I know that, but no, it's, uh, it's great to be back here in Pittsburgh. I think that, uh, you know, I felt it yesterday coming into the airport and definitely feel it here today. That it's, uh, no, it's great. Nice to be back. You can take the Pittsburgh or Aliquip out of the boy, but you can't take the boy out of Aliquip or Pittsburgh. Mike Ditka joins us on Saverin on Sportsbeat. Mike, welcome. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Well, I'm glad to see some suggest you weren't wearing helmets back in the days that you played, but you were playing both ways. There couldn't have been too many more years of that. No, you know, we did. We played about 50, 55 minutes a game, and that was the fun of it. I mean, it was really a great sport. And, and I told somebody earlier, the only team I'd ever been a tight end with was the Bears. The rest of them would have been a defensive linebacker. That was a fact. Dan Marino. Dan, you're among friends. The people watching know that the real Oakland is not in California. That's right, Stan. Thanks. It's, in, it's right there where the University of Pittsburgh is, the real Oakland where I grew up. Love that place. Love the city. And it's always good to get back there when I get a chance. The Hawk has landed. The great Tony Dorsett. Tony, welcome home. Hey, it's always good to be here. You are serving as the honorary captain for Pitt tonight. How closely are you able to follow the Panthers from down there in Dallas where you live? As, 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 as close as I can. It's obviously not, not as close as, as, as if I were here, but uh, I, I play close attention to them. I, I try to pull them up on TV. You know, I got direct TV, so I try to get all the college games, all the pro games. But it, it's kind of hard to keep up when you're, when you're so far away. 
Pirates history is full of pitchers performing in their biggest moments. He won three games in that World Series and pitched brilliantly. From must wins to series clinchers. If I have one game to win and my life depends on it, I'm gonna give the ball to John Candelaria. The Bucks on the Hill were up to the challenge. But in order to beat Baltimore, we had to have good pitching and we had the right guy on the mound. Count down 10 great big game pitchers on IPB. All this month, only on AT&T Sportsnet. I can still hear her trudging up the basement steps after washing another load of my uniforms for tomorrow's practice or Friday night's game. I can still see her behind the backstop all the way from Little League through high school. I couldn't see her from the huddle, but I could feel her eyes on me from her seat on the 50. She was always there. I remember her at my college graduation, which in itself was a mild upset. I remember seeing the tears of pride in her eyes and me responding in kind. Maybe it was at that moment that I realized it was she who was the guiding force in my life. I remember seeing her in the hospital, more concerned with her makeup than her recent surgery. I remember the last time I saw her, never an outward trace of her pain, and yet she knew she would never see another Mother's Day. I thought she'd never leave me. I reached to kiss her, and she kissed me as though it would be for the last time. It was. Several Mother's Days have now come and gone. I still miss her, more now than ever. If you're sitting by your mother, reach over and hug her, or call her and tell her that you love her. I wish I could. Do it now, because if you don't, you'll regret it, maybe forever. Absence does make the heart grow fonder, and since Ladies' Night has been absent from our lineup for quite some time, we thought we would bring it back most appropriately on this day of hearts, turning at least for tonight's sports beat into heartbeat. Jackie from Westwood, PA. Hi, Jackie. Hi, how are you? Good, how you doing? Good. Um, my husband and my mother-in-law and I watch your show every night. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. I have two quick questions for you. Question number one, the Penguins have a habit of sitting players before a trade. Do you think this is the case with maybe Marcus Naslin? Interesting a thought. One would think that they would play him more to showcase him. Linda from West Mifflin. Hi, Linda. Hi, Stan. Hi, Guy. Hi. Hi, Linda. Happy Valentine's Day. Thanks. A um, couple things I want to cover. A uh, Penguin question and then also the Steelers. Um, I, was able, I was fortunate to be out there at the Super Bowl, and I have to tell your listeners, I've never been to one, but I don't know if it was, you know, because we haven't been back there at the, at the Super Bowl for so long, but it was a great experience, even though we lost. Um, I, t I tell all your listeners that they should go. If they have an opportunity, go. All I got to do now is keep working to pay for the trip. <laughs> <laughs> Hello again, everybody. This is the first stop on the Stan and Guy 1995 Summer Porch Tour. We are at the home of Jerry, the Sultan of Suds Miller in Baldwin. He's got a bunch of his friends. We hope that there are more of you in the audience than we have gathered here. Looking forward to a good time beginning tonight and all summer long on the Summer Porch Tour. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to the second annual SFL Draft, standing for Sports Speed Football League Draft. Let's go go uh, out to Denver. Wade Phillips, the new head coach out there, former defensive coordinator. Denver Broncos, you're up next. Denver is going to select from Notre Dame fullback Jerome Bettis. Ah, good choice, I think. Yeah, the whole house. Jerome Bettis uh, is ranked as the second best running back available in draft behind Garrison Hurst. Uh, 5'10", he, he's another guy that you've got to wonder. He's a junior. Would he be better off waiting until next year? Uh, but I think that's a great pick. Well, uh, I, think, I think he's clearly ready to play. And uh, possession is going to win your ball game. Shorten the game, ball control, and he'll put it in the end zone too. He'd rather run over than around, that's for sure. So you've got to go linebacker. You're going to go with Michael Barrow? Yes. Ah, okay. Ooh, Michael Barrow. Okay. Why him over DeBose? I think he's a little bit tougher than Demetrius. He sticks his head in there all the time. Reminds me a lot of Hardy. The Sports Beat Football League draft is underway. The 14th annual Sports Beat Football League draft, I might add. The eyes of the entire region are on you. The Steelers, 
Do they go linebacker? Do they go pass rushing defensive end? Do they go corner? Do they go wide out? Do they go offensive lineman? A lot of ways to go here, Coach. Dan, we are going Matt Jones out of Arkansas. Oh, he took the gamble. You don't strike me as the gambling type, Bill Cower. You're going Matt Jones. Tell me about it. In Pittsburgh, when you think of 36, chances are it won't be Matthew Barnaby. Chances are it'll be Jerome Bettis. And welcome to Jerome Bettis' Grill 36 here on the North Shore. And joining me, the owner and operator himself, the bus, Jerome Bettis. Jerome, it is beautiful. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm, I, you know, I'm so proud of the facility because, you know, whenever you do a restaurant, you want to make sure that it's first class. And when you come in and you eat here, you realize it's first class. Here's the drink list at Jerome Bettis Grill 36. And in case you want more than just a brewski, well, they got a pretty exotic drink list. In fact, they've even gone so far or maybe so low as to come up with a sweet saverin. Wait. Oh, your orange cherry flag. No umbrella. <laughs> no umbrella. Oh, go actually, I'm good. Cheers. And this is what two of you are going to win. If you are the first and 75th correct answer, you will be one of the two that wins. The first correct email and the 75th correct email answer. And here is the trivia question. All right. Jerome Bettis. I just get, oh no I messed it up. <laughs> no. You got a trivia question? I just messed up the trivia question. All right, Franco Harris is the Steelers' career leader in touchdowns. Heinz Ward is about to tie John Stallworth for third. Who is the second all-time Steeler touchdown leader in history? And if you get a wrong answer, I'm going to call you at home and say, what's the matter with you? The first and 75th. How am I doing so far? We still have 48 minutes to go. Punch will be here in just a moment. Oh, man, take me home. The challenger is Renato Cornet. He uh, comes from New Zealand and also Australia. Aust Australia. Did you live in uh, New Zealand for a time? Never. Never? No. Okay, the accent threw me. Sorry about that. <laughs> Australia. Born in Canada, though? No, born in Croatia. You know what? You need to get your publicist. Ah. It's a showdown in Motown, a throwdown. Can't wait till he score a touchdown. Messing with the ever, ever batter surround. This little jig said your man is going down. Young. Don't forget, tomorrow at noon, it will be the Mike Tomlin press conference. Maybe not. Well, Maybe you not. know what, man? I love you. But I'm going to ease on in. Go Fuck ahead. I Go ahead, I don't blame you. Better, I better I should go than you. All right. Two heavyweights in the building, and that's it. why they're on opposite ends, so they wouldn't <laughs> tilt from one side to the other. Pitt was going to play in the Gator Bowl, and, oh. and uh, the team was quartered at the Plush Golf Resort, Ponte Vedra, uh, down in Jacksonville, and, uh, and I was assigned to room with Bino, and I went out on the town, you see, with the boys, and Bino, as was his general practice, he would disappear and go to dinner and get scrambled eggs someplace and then turn in his well, expense account. <laughs> yeah. and, and when I did pick up the dinner check, you still turned in for it. <laughs> no. It was, oh, uh, yes, you did. No. No. When, when, when he would put in, Frank Carver, his boss, used to laugh about it. He'd put in it. He took all the newspaper guys to steak dinner. Yeah. Uh, but, but anyhow, and then he would retire early, you see. So I'd come back to the room about 2 a.m., and I walk in, it's dark, Bino's asleep in bed, you know, and I walk into the bathroom first to get undressed, and there's a sailor's clothing all over the floor, a sailor's outfit. <laughs> what, what the hell's going on here? And it turns out, Bino knew this guy who was stationed at, he was from Pittsburgh, I guess, and he was stationed at Pensacola, and Bino had rented out the floor to him. He was sleeping on the floor. <laughs> and I was so furious, I woke him up. I said, what's going on in here? We ain't renting out the floor, Bino. He started working on his retirement nest egg when he was, when he was 15. Yeah. Yoy. How much did you make off that deal, Bino? None. None. He was a, he was a friend of mine, Jerry McCauley, oh. from college, and I did not make any money. And he said, if you do, I want half. <laughs> don't give me that crap. 
is the thought of Bino and Myron in the same hotel room together with a sailor just enough to ruin your dinner? Uh, I haven't had mine yet. I may not have any tonight at all. What a great moment that was. Layla is our messenger pigeon. This is crazy. You know what else is crazy? That SMS text you're about to send? It's wide open. Salon Pass Lidocaine Flex, a super thin, flexible patch with maximum OTC strength lidocaine that contours to the body to relieve pain right where it hurts. And did we mention it really, really sticks? Salon Pass, it's good medicine. He sent me to. Welcome to the longest running sports show in Pittsburgh television history. Now, from our North Shore studio, Saverin on Sports Beat, brought to you by PNC Bank, leading the way. I kind of feel like Tom Sawyer, who was able to attend his own funeral. Hopefully, they'll come to praise me, not to bury me. That's where we're here tonight to praise Sports Beat, but not to bury it. Perhaps sometimes you've stood in front of a mirror and said to yourself after a few years, how did I get here? I found myself thinking a lot about that. In the next two hours, we're going to take the journey that began in March of 1991 and ends tonight. We've got a number of guests, some already in the studio, and some, to be totally honest, I have no idea who they are or when they'll be on. Of course, that was true most nights of the program. Guys, you welcome. Hey, thanks so much. And boy, what, a, what an honor it is for us uh, to be thank here. You. Thanks. Uh, Congratulations. Thank you for, well, thank you for, for coming in. You guys both joined the broadcast crew. The how old sports beat is so long, Bob was still pitching when, when yeah, the show was, started uh, on the air. Know, when I uh, was watching there very early, uh, all those shots you had, uh, I was thinking back, boy, 91, I was still out on the mound playing and... And we were doing pretty well at that time, too, back then. Yeah. So uh, that, that was a, probably a fun time baseball-wise to get, get the show going. You, you ought to be very proud of what you've done, Stan, because it's been done uh, on, the, on the high ground. Uh, you've taken the, the high road so many times when uh, I'm sure it's been tempting to take the other, the other side. But uh, uh, you've, you've, you've bought that integrity. I, I keep coming back to that point. Uh, and and uh, we'll miss sports beat, but uh, we'll look forward to seeing you on, on the home games for sure. I just wanted to take the time and uh, call and, and recognize the, the fantastic uh, contribution that you've made to to the city and, and to the University of Pittsburgh and, and want to thank you personally. All right, Dave. Well, I appreciate the call. Thank you so much, and I look forward to getting together with you when you get back in town. Thanks again. Okay, Stan. Sounds good. All right. And we talk about partners, and I've had a few, and uh, one guy who's been a partner on Mondays, and especially Mondays, and without the touch of straighter net, of course, <laughs> is Tunch Oaken. Tunch, great to see you. Thanks for coming Man, in. Well, congratulations, Stan. That is, this is crap. I've been loving this show. Just sitting here watching all your guests and calls. It's been fantastic. We have always tried to nail down how long we yes. started um, doing right. the Monday shows uh, with the Tunch of Strader. That's a fairly recent addition, but yes, yes. we go back, what, 10, 12 years that you've been doing yeah, this? Yeah, I'm thinking 97 is when we started working together. And it didn't, you know, it just dawned on me as I was going, wow, I've been hanging out with Stan an awful long time. <laughs> and so uh, it's been great, Stan. I, you know, people always ask me what it's like working uh, with you and, you know, I, the uh, sports icon that you are. And I always tell them, you know, the thing that I love about Stan is everything he says, every comment that he makes, every analysis that he gives, he thinks it through. I said, even when I don't necessarily agree with what he's saying, I know that he's taken a great deal of thought and uh, there's been a, just a whole process. So, you know, congratulations on 18 fantastic years and you are a great and uh, ask the best questions out of any interview I've ever seen. And my longtime partner and dear lifelong friend, Guy Junker, joins us now. I am so I knew the place would go to hell once I left. <laughs> 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 
It just took him a long time to get me. That's all. A long time to find me. This was a true labor of love. If people have any idea how much time we spent thinking about the show, worrying about the show, doing things for the show, it was just our little, you know, mad group of five or six back there putting the thing on every night. Trying to beat each other to the bank on Friday because the last person there to check didn't carry. So, yeah, that's, that was... I love you, Stan. I, the, love the, you best, the best years of my life. I hope both of us uh, have many more, and uh, I'm, I'm thrilled that we're back on radio together. Well, I am too. You shook hands too early. Now they told me we've got two and a half minutes left. Oh, okay. Let's tell so, another story then. Not much has changed in 18 years. The producing still leaves a lot to be desired. Either that or I don't hear uh, as well. One of the shows that I will always remember, and we showed a, a, a little bit of a clip of it, the Francisco Cabrera night when the yeah. Braves beat the Pirates. And we literally served as a psychiatric room for people calling up. I think it was therapeutic for both of us, yeah. too. I mean, we were going to be doing sports speech from Toronto. My wife still tells me that is the only time she has ever seen me speechless. I don't think I talked for an hour and a half. Uh, the, the David Volick uh, game was similar to that. Not quite as crushing. I mean, the Pirates have not had a winning season since that play. I mean, uh, how long ago uh, and how terrible that was. But I think people think we were good for them. I think they were good for us. We needed to talk about it as much as, as everyone else did. I'm always amazed when I think back at... Uh, and it didn't take all that long how quickly the show took off. And it, it actually became, as Bino said earlier, that's where people went, not to get sports information, but the people in the sports business watched, and when they wanted a story out, they, they called us and said, can we come on the show? I am so proud of you. Uh, I'm so proud of you. I know you always looked at me like this, you know, old grandpa and, you know, this mentor. And nah, if that's way, older brother, maybe. Oh, all right, well, I'm, I'm proud to be that. I'm so thrilled for your success and thank you for coming and thanks to the folks at channel four for allowing guy to come in it wouldn't have been a show without you you're not gonna get all choked up again are you yeah ah. you know me ah. <laughs> thanks all right all right uh. where but here could pittsburgh sports nation meet to open our hearts and minds for all to see I'm reminded of the last sentence in Jim Bouton's book, Ball Four, when he says, I spent my entire life gripping a baseball only to realize it was the other way around. For 18 years, I thought I was in control of Sportsbeat, but turns out it was in control of me all along. Stan, as your production crew and, of course, as your colleagues, we wanted to gather as one big group to say thank you and also to say goodbye to the show. Sportsbeat has been a major part of all of our lives. We were very proud to work on the show. It was always honest, factual, and insightful. And it also served the city of Pittsburgh well, which leaves us all with only one thing to say about our time served here on Sportsbeat. Love the show! One of the nicest things anybody ever said to me was, you know what, you're a real Pittsburgh guy. To me, there's no greater compliment. Hey, yeah. fans. Good to see you, Good to see you man. Good to see you, man. think I'd recognize you. I, I wasn't sure. It's been a couple of years. show's been off since 2009, people still talk about it, they still remember it, very meaningful to me. My dad told me, he said, there's always room in this world for a guy who's willing to hustle to make a buck. You go up every day, you work hard every day, and if you think that you've got nothing left to give, you're wrong, there is more to give and you give it. There's more in there. Make sure that you give everything you've got every single day. I saw him do it, I saw her do it, and I don't know any other way.